Hi, welcome to Elaine and Lightning's video blog number 23. Today we're going to continue with lesson 14 in the Course in Miracles. It is going to be a very wonderful lesson for us to do together. I had considered just preparing you for the lesson and then as it states in the lesson that we would close our eyes and repeat these words being really specific about fears that we have of things that happen in the world, whether it's because they've happened to us or someone else or whether it's somebody we know or not, or just an event that we've seen in the world that scares us and that we're afraid might happen to us. We don't want to do this more than a minute or even less is fine. And I thought about just shutting the video off after the explanation and letting you just do it on your own. And I realized that that was just the ego wanting me to, you know, not share my fears because whatever we can talk about and bring to the light, it no longer is going to have a hold on us whenever we're not afraid anymore to talk about it. So I'm actually going to tap while I do this lesson and when I do my particular fears, I'm going to close my eyes and you can close yours. And then I suggest that you substitute the things that you're afraid of and they'll come to your mind while you're doing the tapping. But we can still do it together. Um, I think it'll be very powerful. Now, I did want to share, um, well, first of all, I'm going to say the lesson is God did not create a meaningless world. And, of course, that's the whole point of what we've been doing as we built up to this lesson. I've been doing a lesson a day on these video blogs, so if you haven't done those, you might track back and build up to this. And the idea is that um, it's the reason why the world we see is is... It's not even possible for it to be meaningless, but we've been talking about it, how it doesn't have meaning. But it's because it doesn't... Uh, what God has created is the only reality there is. And that's not what we're seeing. If we see change, and we see... Uh, yeah, if we just see change right there, that's, um, that's a surest thing that we're looking through the ego at the world. And we're, we've created what we see, and... So the idea is that um, everything that does exist as he created it, the world you see has nothing to do with reality. So we call it our reality that we see in this world, but it really isn't um, our reality. So because it's all of our own making and in that way it doesn't exist because it's so change, it's so ever changing. Um, it's just trading illusions for illusions. Now, there's a lot more to this we could get into. I recommend that you read The Course in Miracles. Um, I recommend that you do the lessons one a day, no more than one a day, starting with the first one, so you can track back with the video blogs. And I am tapping while I do these videos because I am an EFT coach and I uh, do everything holistically. The whole point of tapping is that it helps us to tune into our body and it will help us to release these memories from ourselves. We do store all this negativity in our body and there's a sense in which we do that because we're really trying to hurt ourselves. It's, um, we talk about how autoimmune disease, diseases are the body attacking itself. That's just a good uh, example of the symbolism of what we do. And we can release those out of our body and allow heaven and earth to join together and we can, um, we can see things totally differently and in that way we'll find joy and peace and we'll have miracles abounding and I've been finding this to be very powerful to share these lessons online. I've done these lessons before and I'm doing them again only this time I'm sharing the, them with you. Now before we do the lesson, which will only take about a minute, I'm going to share with you an experience that's happened with me recently. And just, just to give an example too of how you can tap on absolutely anything and you can also find areas of your life that will shift and you'll think about it and you didn't even tap on that specific thing but it will change it. So for example, I'm getting ready for my trip to Bali and I called the airline and was asking questions because I have a flight inland here on the uh, continent and before I leave internationally. So I had some questions about my baggage and how that would get checked and everything. I already knew I had two bags limit as checked baggage. And before we got off the call, she just kind of like remembered, oh, and by the way, international bags is 70 pounds. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. And what was neat is that I hadn't been worrying about, even though I found out there was only two bags, I wasn't worrying about it. I knew better than to worry about it. And how I learned that 
was obviously through my training, but um, when I went to my first spiritual retreat, um, it was not too long after I had started in my training with EFT, and I went to have a spiritual retreat with my mentor. And it was a week-long retreat, and it was a summer retreat. Well, I normally when I pack and travel, I just kind of take everything that I think I might need and don't try to really limit myself and take whatever bags I need for that. Well, so when I was traveling out there, my mentor was picking me up at the airport and I kind of texted her and said, you know, hey, just to let you know, I'm warning, I, I, am, um, I have a lot of baggage. And it just hit me and I think I even texted something about how, well, there's some symbolism there, isn't there? Because with EFT, we're letting go of emotional baggage. And so I knew that I had a lesson to learn there. Well, when I went on my second spiritual retreat, I um, was a winter retreat. And I was, you know, thinking, wow, I need, you know, boots and jeans, which are heavier. I was going to need uh, coats and sweaters and layers. And so, um, and yet by then I had learned quite a bit between retreats, let go of a lot of fear and worry about things. So I just wasn't worrying about what I needed or whether it would fit. But when I went to pack, I got out my two suitcases that I normally check in and Sometime, and I'll always take a third bag, so I'll have a big, medium, and a small, and I'll have the smaller one as the roller, and I'll take that on the plane along with a big bag, um, a big purse. And I just got out the two bags, and when I went to load them, I just kind of loaded what I needed and just did it, and I wasn't thinking a lot about it, I just put it in, and when I got done, I looked and I hadn't filled either suitcase even halfway. And I was just amazed, and I was able to put my heavy coat in there and some books and take some extra stuff, plus I had extra room to bring things back. And it was no problem on the weight. And I, and I thought, wow, I have let go of a lot of emotional baggage. And then I thought this was really cool on this trip to just kind of find out this lady wasn't really planning to tell me about the 70 pound. I didn't ask about it because I just assumed it was 50 pounds and I was just going to count on it. And, um, and it was nice that I hadn't been worrying about whether I was going to remember, um, have enough clothes because I was going to be gone for a month. Uh, with two bags and I thought well it's a summer retreat you know kind of a summer retreat away in Bali I won't need a lot of stuff and um, yet I can take 70 pounds per bag and then I realized I had gotten extra luggage a new set of luggage so now I have an old big bag and a new big bag so I can take two big bags which hadn't occurred to me before either and do the 70 pounds and I'll be fine and I, it'll be great so you can tap on anything that comes up for you and I recommend that you do and then just realize that as you let go of some of these patterns some areas of your life are just going to automatically get taken care of and that's pretty cool. So let's let's concentrate on our lesson for today and what we're going to do is we will uh, close our eyes and like I said you want to think of all the horrors in the world that cross your mind and uh, name them each as it occurs to you. Don't leave any out just because you you know don't try to judge any of them just bring them up as they come up say them to out loud to yourself however you want to do it i'm going to say mine out loud while i do tapping on my body on these points if you're not familiar with the points you can just tap right here on the collarbone point that's a very powerful point while you talk and um i may or may not move around i'll just follow intuition on that but what we'll do is we'll just say god did not create that such and such and make sure you're very specific it's like um you know god did not create that natural disaster well that's not really specific just name the one that that worries you um, maybe it has to do with that you live in that part of the country or family lives on a part that you're worried about so and then you end it with and so it is not real okay i can't explain all the purpose of of this lesson but i'm very excited about dealing with this lesson today um based on some of the things that are going on in my life. I've learned a lot about um, the conflict that we have and I've addressed a lot of that in my life where we blame God for the things that have happened in our life. And so this is, this we're going to address that God did not create these meaningless things, okay? And the ego will try to argue with the fact that these have meaning and that we do need to blame God. So this is really an important lesson. So start out with just taking a deep breath just to help you get grounded. And then, um, and then we're just going to close our eyes 
and you can tap on your body and repeat the phrase with adding your own fears, okay? God did not create that breast cancer, and so it is not real. God did not create that death by car crash, and so it is not real. God did not create that tsunami, and so it is not real. God did not create that sluggish colon, and so it is not real. God did not create that miscarriage, and so it is not real. God did not create that hypothyroidism, and so it is not real. God did not create that plane crash, and so it is not real. God did not create that Alzheimer's, and so it is not real. God did not create that mental abuse, and so it is not real. And let's just repeat, God did not create a meaningless world. The idea for today can, of course, be applied to anything that disturbs you during the day. Aside from the practice periods, be very specific in applying it and say, God did not create a meaningless world. He did not create, and be very specific with the situation that's disturbing you in that moment, and so it is not real. Now just repeat these phrases after me. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Okay, that's a little whole pono pono there at the end to, to uh, help us to delete um, the, the data that doesn't serve us. So I'm going to go on to my private restorative yoga session, which is a very powerful way to support this practice that I do with EFT. And I highly recommend that type of work and support for yourself. And I thank you for joining me today. Have a blessed day. I'll see you next time. TaplightUnlimited.com. Bye-bye.